Good evening, everyone. How are y'all doing tonight? Oh, yeah, that's about half of you. Come on, yeah, at least the students are excited tonight. It's great. Uh, this has been quite a few years in the making since the last time they were here. Uh, we've been trying every way we could to get them back, booked back through this area, and so I hope y'all enjoy tonight as much as I do. In just a few minutes, we're going to hear... Uh, like a major award-winning band is going to be playing for us, leading us in worship tonight. Uh, I got to know Denver when he was actually arranging some music. Uh, arranged some music for one of my favorite Christmas musicals we ever did here. Uh, one that's meant so much to me uh, that, that he did with Travis Cottrell and some other folks and all. And uh, these guys have, have played for the Olympics. These guys have been the house band for the Gospel Music Association. I mean... If it's out there, they've done it, and tonight, they're at Northcrest Baptist Church right here in Meridian, Mississippi, all right? So, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then as soon as I get done, uh, as only you can do, I want you all to welcome, uh, well, I'll tell you who it is, but you should know already, okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now, and God, I just want to thank you for the, Lord, I want to thank you for the gift of music. Lord, I want to thank you for how you've blessed us with uh, people who are so talented and, and, and are going to use their skills tonight, Lord, to play and to honor you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for Denver and the songs that you've allowed him to arrange and compose, Lord, the things that you've allowed him to write. And God, tonight as he leads us, Lord, I pray that we have a fun time, but Lord, I pray that we also get real and get serious in you, Jesus. It's going to be great tonight. Lord, we just love you, we praise you, and we exalt you. Lord, now it's time for us to get out of the way, and it's time for us to see you and let you shine tonight. Jesus, in your precious name I pray, amen and amen. Y'all put your hands together and do as only we can. Let's welcome Denver and the Mile High Orchestra. All right, y'all, put your hands together with me. Here we go. I heard an old, old story About a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me And I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning And then I repented of my sin And won a victory Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. And he loved me, yeah, I knew Him, and all my love is through Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. That's right. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and it caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal of my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in jesus my savior Sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. And he loved me, yeah, I knew him, and all my love is through him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing on the dinner sex of all y'all.
Give it up for James Filling on the blues guitar, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So Mr. Tyler Yeager on the trumpet, y'all. Well, I heard about a mansion that he's built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And about the angels singing and the old reedy dancing story. so much everybody we're Denver in the Mile High Orchestra and we are so honored and blessed to be able to be here in beautiful Meridian Mississippi with all of y'all tonight uh, we did not fly from the Rocky Mountains of Colorado to be here uh, I have already had one gentleman ask me how is what's the, what's, the, what's it like in Denver and I'm like I have no earthly idea I've never lived there before uh, my name is Denver that's my name I was actually born and raised in the good old Hoosier State of Indiana. Do we have any transferred Hoosiers out there? All one of you. And the crowd goes mild. At least you're representing, brother. We got a ball team this year. I think we just might. Uh, well, anyways, listen, y'all where I grew up, uh, it's about 70 degrees cooler outside right now uh, up in northern Indiana. I grew up in a place that's as flat as a pancake. It's corn as far as the eye can see. When I tell you I have a really corny family, I really do mean it. My father was a corn inspector for the Indiana Crop Association for 41 years. So I have a crazy family. They gave me a crazy name. My name is Denver. It's on the birth certificate. I have two beautiful children back in Nashville, Tennessee, where I've lived for the last 20 six years. Everybody in Mississippi say, yee-haw! Yee Did you hear that, boys? That is a real yee-haw right there in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, I've got two beautiful children back there. I have a son who is uh, 17. My son's name is Boston. And so uh, what are you laughing out there for? That's my kid's name. I wouldn't be laughing at your kid's name or your grandkid's name. That's not very nice. Uh, I've got a little girl who's not so little anymore. She's 15. I think she's going on 23. Uh, her name is London. So we have Denver and Boston and London. And thank God someone is normal in our family. And that would be my wife, Amy. Uh, and they're, yeah, not Albuquerque. So praise God for that. I need to see a show of hands really quick. How many of you guys grew up singing songs like Jesus Loves Me and This Little Light of Mine and He's Got the Whole World? 15 of you are awake tonight. That's great. Well, I love these kind of songs I grew up singing in Sunday school, and a lot of, a lot of kids that I meet around the, in the nation have never heard some of these songs. So I've been trying to bring back some of these songs a little bigger and better with our little big band sound. So if you know any of the words, feel free to clap your hands, sing along. There may be a hand motion or two. This is called the Sunday School Swing.
right, y'all, here we go. Come on now. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, B-I-B-L-E. I've been waiting all week long, but Sunday to come and we'll sing our song. Have a little church to do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. All right, everybody, can you snap your fingers with me tonight? Let's get real cool. It's Sunday evening at church here in Berea. Here we go. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Josh fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Josh fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling, tumbling down. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come. We'll say our song, have a little church, and do our thing. Everybody, and do the Sunday school swing. All right, everybody. Can you make this hand motion with your hands tonight? Some of you can do it. Here we go, right now. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Come on. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in now everybody get your fingers ready. We're gonna put them up in the sky. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come. We'll sing our song, have a little church, and do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. I've been waiting all week long for Sunday to come. We'll sing our song, have a little church, do our thing. Everybody's rocking to the Sunday school swing. Woo! -hoo. The Sunday school swing. Jesus loves me, this I know, yeah. Right. All right. I'm telling you what, fellas, I think we got the best seat in the house tonight. We get to be up here on the platform and we get to see all of your beautiful Mississippi faces out there. And I love songs where we have a little bit of audience participation, a little bit of interaction, because it's like I get to see each and every one of you. It's like your personalities, they just kind of blossom, you know, before my very eyes, like, uh, like in that last song. And I'm like, now everybody gets your fingers ready. And there were about 15 of you in the second, third, and fourth rows in dead center who had one too many Mountain Dews before you came in here tonight. And they were like, oh, that's a lot of mine. You know, they were singing and so winging. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then there's some of you tonight that are just a little bit on the fence, you know. You're like, you know, the band sounds really, really nice up there on stage and everything. But, you know, I'm not quite sure about all this yet. You know, Pastor Paul I begged and pleaded me to come hear a big band of all things. And if I'm really honest, that dude in that weird red jacket at the front is just a little too extra happy for me. You know, you're not quite sure about this. So if some of you are a little bit more like... Uh, this little light of mine, I'm not going to do it too much, right? And then there's some of you, some of you, 
And you know who you are because your wife is secretly nudging you in the pew right now. Some of you are like, I'm way too cool for Sunday school. I'm not putting my finger up in the air. <laughs> so I absolutely love to get to see all of our personalities at work. And so all I can truly say on behalf of myself <laughs> and probably the Mile High Orchestra is just say thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you for participating or not participating. It is wildly entertaining for us. It's the most entertaining part of what, we, of what I do here. So thank you very much. You know, I grew up in a very musical home. I'm so grateful uh, that my parents gave me the opportunity to, to be exposed to music and sing music and play music from an early age. Uh, and I'm also really, really grateful my parents gave me the chance to be able to go to church uh, from the time that I was literally born. They knew I was going to need a whole lot of Jesus in my life. And, um, and so I am really grateful for those things. And now being a dad and having two kids of my own, uh, it's amazing to me one of the unique qualities that God gave music. You know, I could hear someone say something, speak something, even in a speech, um, or, and it might make sense, but I might forget it five minutes or five days or five months from now. But it's incredible to me, growing up in children's church, that these songs that I learned when I was very little, how some of them I have not sung in decades of my life, and I could sing them for you word for word right here, right now. Did any of you grow up? There's a song that I grew up singing in children's church that went like this. It said, if I were a butterfly, I thank the Lord for giving me wings. And have you seen that? Like three of you. We have totally lost them. You didn't grow up singing it. No, yes, you did. That's amazing. All right. Uh, well, how about this one? I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. Sing along with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. potentiality. There's a lyric that stuck with you a few decades. I mean, whoever, who writes a lyric like potentiality anyways, do you know? Catastrophe? No, potentiality. Bill and Gloria Gaither. Anyways, my whole point is it's amazing to me that when you can take a lyric and give it a melody and learn it when you're young, it's literally like those words can stick with you the rest of your life. And, uh, and so when my kids were really little, God gave me an idea of taking his word, taking scriptures from, from, the, from the Bible and putting them to songs, putting them to music, songs that we would sing around the uh, you know, bonus room of our home or uh, when I'm doing my good night lullabies with my kids. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool if maybe, just maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, if my kids might have a little bit of God's word written on their hearts through the power of music. And so we wrote a bunch of these songs because uh, my kids helped me write them. Um, and then we recorded a bunch of them and it's on a project called The Good Book. And I thought it'd be kind of fun if we did one of The Good Book songs tonight. Would y'all like to hear a little bit of The Good Book tonight? Yeah, they're excited. All right, so this song we're going to do for you is out of the Old Testament, uh, this verse, and it's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10, and it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. It's one of these really encouraging and uplifting uh, song, uh, you know, verses, and so... Growing up in northern Indiana where we have winter at least nine and a half months of the year, when I think of lifting and encouraging, I don't think of cold. I think of like warm and tropical kind of weather. So I had to write something that had a little bit more of a warm and tropical sound to it. I well, you know what, we're just going to go, just go into the song. I've got a little surprise for each of us tonight. This is Isaiah 41.10. For I am with you. Sorry, that's the best I could do. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. All right. Do not fear. You guys want to hit it up in the sky, okay? That's kind of the point. For I am with you, do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. Yeah. I will strengthen you and 
help you. Did one of them get up to the balcony somewhere with my righteous right hand? That was nice. I'll strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear, for I am with you. Love thy neighbor out there, children. Love thy neighbor. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. You may not want to go back to your seat for another three minutes. All right, you know what? Here's the thing. You all need to hit it up in the sky because you all are like pulverizing your neighbors in front of you. You know, Pastor Paul, I think this would be great to use on Sunday morning during the service. You know, for all those people checking Instagram, they're going to get hit in the head, back of the head with a beach ball. Sermon attentiveness could go through the roof. And here's the deal. When you get hit in the back of the head with a beach ball, you're the only person in the entire audience that has no idea you're being hit in the back of the head with a beach ball because everybody else is watching you get hit in the back of the head with a beach ball, but no one wants to tell you you're getting hit in the back of the beach ball. Here we go. And do not fear, oh do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Aren't you so glad you sat where you sat tonight, sir? <laughs> Balls, everybody. All right. Sir, we have an anger management course for you after the service. You really need to pay attention to that love thy neighbor in the pew next to you. That was crazy. All right, can you all start to return some of those beach balls? I need those. Those are $1.49 at Walmart. I used to say 99 cents, but that's not true anymore. Thank you so much. Oh, very good. That was a good throw. All right, that's two of them. Seriously, y'all, I'm not going to be able to find these in the stores for another six months. I need those beach balls back. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Uh, are y'all still with us? Is anybody ready to leave after all that? I promise it's going to get a lot more normal now. Uh, it's all right. You're so sweet. How normal is normal? Well, there's no more beach balls. And I didn't bring the bubbles this time. So, so there you go. There you go. Uh, you know, I actually grew up in a very, very traditional church, and that shocks a whole lot of people uh, when I break out the beach balls and when, uh, when we do our music. But I grew up in the kind of church where we would come every single week, uh, and we would come and sit down in the pews. I love that y'all here at Northcrest still have pews. A lot of kids around the nation have never seen a pew before. Um, and we'd come sit down in the pews, and there would be, uh, you know, a piano on one side of the sanctuary and there'd be a drum set, I mean, there'd be an organ on the other side of the sanctuary and there would be uh, these books in the pews in front of us. And what are those books called? They're called the, the hymnals. And I grew up every single week in church, we'd stand up, we'd open up those books and I grew up singing the first and the second and the fourth verse to every single hymn known to man. Did anybody else grow up that way just like me? I love, I love these hymns, and I don't know any of the third verses to any of them, not a one of them. And you'd think, Chris, you know, that, you know, after 23 and a half, almost 24 years, the DMHO, the Mile High Works, will be 24 years in four weeks, which is absolutely, boy, we're getting old. Uh, we're getting old fast. But um, I would have never met, you'd think that if I was going to write and arrange all of these songs for orchestras and for the big band to play, that I would include the third verse. But I never have because I don't know any of them. Uh, and this next hymn that we're going to do together, might, honestly, it might be not only the most popular hymn here in the United States, it may actually be the most popular hymn in the entire world. In almost every country I've been to, I've heard people singing this song in their own languages. So uh, we're going to put up the words to the first, second, 
and fourth verse. And I hope you will sing along with me as we sing about God's unfailing love and his truly amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind. tonight for his truly amazing grace. You know, the older I get in my life, the more God begins to penetrate this hardened heart of mine. 
with those precious words we just sang. You know, I've sung that song. Chris, I was trying to figure out how many times have I sung that song in my life? You know, from 24 years on the road to growing up singing in church the way I did. I don't know, somewhere between maybe 1,800, 1,900, close to maybe 2,000 times, realistically. I might be able to sing it backwards to you. You know what I mean? If I was really, really lucky, I might be able to actually sing some of it in my sleep to you. And the truth is that there's been many seasons of my life where that little song has just been just that. Just a little song that I could sing to you without even thinking about what in the world it is that's coming out of my mouth. I think one of the greatest gifts we could have here tonight is be reminded of the precious gospel of which we base our lives, our faith, our families. Think about it with me. The song's not called Mediocre Grace, is it? Amazing grace. It's amazing that a holy and righteous God, a God who was and is and is to come, a God who put the stars, put the entire universe into place, a God who has absolutely, unequivocally no equal, this is the truth of who he is. Who is so unbelievably rich in mercy and unfailing love. Unfailing love. God himself tells us in his word that his love, his love never fails. And God knew that I was not going to get that. That I would not understand it because it doesn't take more than a couple nanoseconds for me to look at the landscape of my own life and what do I see? Failure of every single kind. I see my own sin, my own rebellion. I see failure sometimes in my family or even in my job or in ministry. You can turn on the evening news and it won't take 10 seconds before they start telling you about all the failure of this world. Eventually, even our own health on this planet eventually fails. And a holy, perfect God looks at you and me and says, I give you and offer you a love that has not, is not, and will not fail you. And he knew that we wouldn't really understand it. He could have said it, right? We read in God's word, he says, God said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light. But he didn't just say it. He did it. God literally showed up to be God with us. We just got done celebrating it a couple months ago, right? That half a world away, a little over 2,000 years ago, Almighty God himself came down to earth to be born among us, to be born as a human, as a man, in a, in a barn, amongst a bunch of stinky, smelly animals. God himself came as a tiny baby named Jesus. And there was something so profound and different about him, even as a young boy. The scriptures say that his knowledge, the deep knowledge that he had of the scriptures, it confounded, it just perplexed those in the synagogue. And as he began to grow and grow older, eventually he started doing miracles, the kind of miracles that literally only God himself could do. He was raising dead people back to life. And then as he garnered a bunch of followers and was teaching them about his father's kingdom, about the kingdom of God, what it's really all about, when he publicly proclaims exactly who he is, that he is literally the son of God himself. In almost three blinks of an eye, you turn around and he's betrayed by one of his closest friends. For any of you that have ever experienced the heart-shattering pain of betrayal, have you ever stopped to wonder that your God knows exactly how you feel? And so he's rounded up, He's questioned, he's mocked, he is brutally, brutally tortured. And if that wasn't enough, they decide to put his death sentence on his back and parade him through town for every single soul to see. And I've often wondered about that. Why did they have to make it so public? Why did they have to make it so, to proclaim it as, as, as far as they could? And I'm sure there's a million reasons, but in this season of my life, the reason that stands out is that they wanted so badly to show that his love would fail because of the own failure we experience in our lives. And so they hung him on that cross 
and Jesus died. But that's not the end of the story, is it? Because on the third day, and I thank God that there's a third day, because God knew how many first and second days I was going to experience here on earth. How many first and second days have you had when it feels like all hope is lost, when it truly looks like death has won? But ladies and gentlemen at North Crest Baptist, ladies and gentlemen here in Meridian, Mississippi, I am here to remind each and every one of us of the most life-changing truth that on the third day, Jesus Christ rose from the dead to conquer death, to conquer our sin. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. And I need that kind of grace. I need that kind of love. So praise God for his truly amazing grace and unfailing love. Some of you sitting there tonight might have been a lot like me growing up in church and you'd look at the people on the platform like your wonderful pastor who preaches here every week or like Pastor Paul, my friend, who worships the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I would look at those people sitting in the pew and I'd think, man, isn't it amazing the hope and the life and the, tr the purpose that God has for those people. I would have never articulated it to another person on the planet, but I would look at those folks and if I got really honest with myself, I'd say, isn't it amazing the love that God has for those people? And then I would get up out of my seat and go back through the double doors of my church to what I thought was my very mundane, mediocre, meaningless life. Because I thought I had believed a truth when in actuality I had bought a lie. And I believed that God could never love somebody like me, someone who had literally failed so much and for any of you in this room that wonder if God might know who you are for any of you that whether you've gone to church for five days or for 50 years I wonder if God really loves you if we read the scriptures and John three sixteen says for God so loved the world that God so loves you sir that God so loves you, ma'am, not just the person sitting next to you. I mean you. And that the truth is that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't even matter what you have done in your life. Jesus loves you just the same. It is not too much for the unfailing love of Jesus Christ. And so I had to write a song as I'm trying to understand this powerful, precious love of Jesus. And I hope that it encourages you, no matter where you're at, that there's hope for you, there's purpose for you. He knows he created you as uniquely as your own fingerprints on your own hand. He knows the amount of hairs on top of your head, or lack thereof for Pastor Paul up here. And he has a plan and a purpose for you. He knows your name. The sunshine hits your face He's blowing you kisses from heaven When you smell the sweet scent of rain New life is beginning again My God knows how you live Who you love and where you put your pretty little head Down to sleep at night He's better than a best friend Faithful beyond the ends of time So don't you be dismayed You're not alone he knows your name, he sees you smile, he feels the pain from all those empty tears you cried. He knows you, he wants you, he loves you like nobody loves you. He knows your name, he's dreaming your plans, holding your heart right in his hands. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what you've done, he loves you just the same. And he knows your name. He knows, he knows, he knows your name, yeah, yeah. The 
Would you know that you make his day just, just because, because of who you are and you bring a smile to his face? Cause you are the joy of his heart. I know you care at pain. Guilt, shame is never picture perfect, but it's worth the when God's in your life. You might feel ordinary. You're extraordinary in his eyes. So don't you be dismayed. Your life matters today. He knows your name. He sees you smile. He feels the pain from all those endless tears you cry. And he knows you. He wants you. He loves you like nobody loves you. He knows your name. He's dreaming your plans, holding your heart right in his hands. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what you've done. He loves you just the same. Cause he knows your name When life's unbelievable It's inconceivable Everything, anything That my God can do Nothing's impossible He's gonna see you through Yeah, he knows your name He sees you smile He feels the pain From all those endless tears you cried and He loves you, he loves you Like nobody loves you He knows your name Dreaming your plans, holding your heart right in his hands. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what you've done, he loves you just the same. He knows your name. Yeah, he knows, he knows, he knows your name. Those fingerprints upon your hand, those hairs on your head, he knows, he knows, he knows. He knows, he knows your name. Oh, how he loves you and me. Sing with me if you know it tonight. Oh, how he loves you. This next tune we're going to do for you is really special. In the last 24 years of our band, um, we have really, I mean, it's beyond a dream come true. When we started, we were all a bunch of punk kids at uh, Belmont University, and we got uh, involved in the college ministry at, uh, Bel at uh, Two Rivers Baptist Church. And our band started as kind of an outreach to college kids uh, while we were still in college. And I couldn't have imagined that he could have taken a bunch of crazy uh, band geeks and literally taking them all over the world to sing to millions of people in so many different places. Uh, the band has gone to China three different times in the last six or seven years. Uh, I've sung in the country of Turkey uh, and in Greece. I've been in different parts of Eastern and Western Europe. Uh, I've been in Haiti. I've been in uh, parts of Central and, and South America. Uh, I am so grateful. Been to Russia. I've been to Russia as well. Um, so grateful to get to experience the people in those places. Um, I am sometimes grateful for the food. Um, when you go to China, there is no such thing as sweet and sour chicken in China. That is an American thing, okay, just if you're ever wondering. The first time we were there, they gave us like this turtle soup, and I can remember literally the claw was almost floating. It was like waving at me. <laughs> like, man, I did not bring enough beef jerky the very first time that I went to China. I did not make that mistake the next two times. But anyways... But when they say you're going back, uh, when I get on an airplane, they say you're going back to the United States, I really do thank God above. Um, we are so honored and blessed uh, to be able to live in a wonderful country. Uh, I can remember being in Turkey, uh, in the town of Izmir, Turkey, and we were there over the 4th of July. 
uh, and my, my missions team leader was, you know, we were about almost five and a half, almost six weeks that we were there. So he w had enough foresight to say, wow, we won't be in America on the 4th of July. And he brought something. He brought red, white, and blue jelly beans for us to eat. And that's how we got to celebrate because it was just another day in Izmir, Turkey. And the very next day was Sunday. So that was a day that we would go to church. And we did something that I had never done before in my life, and I've never done it outside of my time there in Turkey. But we would take our Bibles, and we'd wrap them up in brown paper bags so that it looked like we were carrying tools or our lunches with us as we walked down the street. I even had a friend of mine named Fletch Wiley, while we were there trying to do some ministry that was actually taken into police custody, detained for almost 24 hours in his entire team. They took their passports. All these other Turkish people were pointing at my uh, group of Americans, said, they're with them too, those Americans, take them. And I remember my, uh, Jeff Baxter, my team leader, literally getting up and going, run to the cars, run as fast as you can, like, act like you don't know who those people are. Run. And I couldn't, I mean, if you were born and raised in this country like I was, the mere fact that we have the opportunity to walk through the doors of this beautiful church and to freely sing about God's amazing grace, to freely sing about his unfailing love, y'all, we are so unbelievably blessed. We are so unbelievably blessed. And there's a lot of people, even folks in this very room, that we can say thank you for that blessing. I think what makes America so really, really great I mean, you know, I mean, Statue of Liberty is nice and the food in Texas is heavenly and even, I mean, you know, I'm just going to say it, but, but really what makes America so great is its people and the people that have sacrificed and given so much for the freedoms that we have, especially the freedom to be able to worship our Lord and our God. And so I do this in almost every event I do, but if we have any man or woman here tonight who has previously served in one of our armed forces or is still currently serving in one of our armed forces, and I'm going to go one step further than that tonight. If we have any man or woman here that's retired or currently someone we would call in modern day like a first responder, maybe you're a policewoman, maybe you're a fireman, maybe you're someone, uh, you know, every single day you wake up to make our communities better places in serving our community and our families and our country. Would each and every one of you stand right where you are so we can say thank you. Thank you so much for your service to our community and to our country. Thank you, 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 and thank you, and thank you. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to bless America. Amen. You know, these are crazy days we're living in, in America, and uh, some of you may be going through a hard season of life and may not feel very blessed on the inside. You know, I've gone through a really tough season of life the last two or three years, but you know what I've noticed? I began, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but here's what I've noticed. I've noticed that in some of my darkest hours is when God's blessings shine the brightest. I've began to notice in my life that the blessings of God the things that literally only God himself could give to us, like peace, hope, joy, healing, redemption, purpose. These things are for us every moment of every day, in the brightest and in the darkest of days, y'all. We are blessed. I'm blessed. You are blessed. And so as I sing this song that you've heard 800,000 times in your life, I want to do it to say thank you to those of you who have served and are still serving. And I hope it can be a reminder to you, no matter where you're at, good, bad, and ugly in your life, and be reminded that the blessings of God are here and they're for you, that we are a blessed people as God's people. God, may you continue to speak and inspire and challenge us. God, may you continue to pour your love into us and may we continue to pour that love to our friends, our families, and our neighbors all over this nation and across the world. And God, would you continue to do what you have been so merciful in doing for hundreds of years. May you continue to bless our nation. Amen.
sing with me. God bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, why with all God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet home. We need your mercy. We need your grace. We need your power, Lord, as we see your face, oh God. We need your truth, Jesus, to set us free. We need your anointing. From sea to shining sea, and every town, every city, and every child of every family, we hope in you alone. From your church to our nation, over all your creation, make your glory. continue to bless America. Amen. Amen. All right, this next thing we're going to do for you is a whole lot of fun. And my great grandpa, Chance, this was his most favorite song on planet Earth. He loved this song so much. And every time we would sing it in church, the organ would play. And it had such a very reverent, such a very sacred sound to it. And then I turned around and I recorded it as a Dixieland song. So uh, uh, before we play it like a Dixieland song, I would like to play it for you uh, a bit more reverently on the trumpet um, as you kind of hear it the way it would normally be played. And it's such a special song to me and my family. It's the kind of song you don't want to play with uh, one trumpet. It's the kind you at least want to try to play with two. So I hope you enjoy this. This is Holy, Holy, Holy.
holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. around the glass to see cherubim and seraphim falling 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 down before thee which words and are in and more shall be all right trombone man here we go Give it up for Mr. Jonathan Warburton on the slide trombone. Give it for Jonathan, y'all. so much. Give it up for Jonathan, everybody. Uh, he, uh, Jonathan grew up in England of all places, and uh, so he wins the award for traveling the furthest to play with us here tonight. Um, I really, I've 
you talk about a gift uh, that God has just, I've, he has been so gracious to me that I get to make music with my friends. Are you enjoying the Mile High Orchestra? Aren't they really something special? Very, very cool. They come from a lot of different places, and I'll, I'll introduce all of them here in just a little bit before we finish up. Um, but I just really uh, wanted to share this song. This is an old song for us. Wrote it in 2002. Boy, that was a, lot, that was a while ago. It just feels like yesterday, Chris. Um, because I, I can't stress this enough to each and every one of you tonight, and that is this. Um, some of you might be going through life thinking that your life really doesn't matter very much. Maybe some people along your path have kind of even spoken some of that into you, that your life here, that your purpose here, that it doesn't really matter to much on this planet. Nothing could be further from the truth. See, the reality is, the truth that this world is not going to really share with you is this, that you matter on this planet, that you matter here because you matter to the heart of of Almighty God. You matter to the heart of Almighty God. And for those of us that, are, that put our faith in Him, for those of us that are called by His name, we may be some of the only glimpses of Jesus that the people in our neighborhoods or even in our own homes may ever see. You know, the way I came to know Christ was not from being born and raised in church my whole life. I'm grateful for those things. I heard the truth from a very young age, but that's not what brought me to the Lord. What brought me to the Lord was when I was 17 years old and one of my dearest friends uh, named Christina Gibbs died in a car accident right after school when she was just driving home. I found out at the end of band practice that day and I was shattered. And I would love to say that, you know, that I was strong, but I, I, I was shattered and I've wondered, there's got to be more to life than this. Please someone tell me there's more to life than this. If it's so fragile, if it's so short. And those little words, that, those seeds that have been planted when I was young, that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Something lasting, something more, something more meaningful than me. I was living for me, and guess what? That felt pretty empty. And so in the heap of my own tears in the parking lot of my high school is where I came to know Jesus. And you know what? Here's the deal. You matter. You matter, and you may be the only glimpses of Jesus that some people you dearly love in your life may ever see. We're going to leave a legacy someday, y'all. Someday we're going to leave a legacy. And as much as I enjoy tooting on a, on a trumpet, Tyler... I hope that on my, on my gravestone, they don't say, here lies Denver, who played a trumpet really high and loud. How empty is that? I would want my life to be about something different. I want my life to be about something more. Because in these very fleeting days that you and I have, we can be investing in something that is lasting. We can be giving the truth and the love of Jesus to those around us that are in need. And we can leave a legacy that lasts. We can leave a legacy that matters long after they have forgotten we were ever even here. My hope and my prayer for all of us is that we would leave a legacy that says one word, Jesus, only Jesus. What will they say when my life is over? Will it fade into the past? What will remain when my life is over? Is there something that will last? What will I leave behind? stand the test of time I leave the one who's worthy of my whole life my legacy all I will leave is Jesus only Jesus the world might see inside of me is Jesus 
Jesus, only Jesus, Lord, I long for you to be my legacy. so much more may I testify your glory Lord to my legacy all I will leave is Jesus only Jesus the world will see inside of But they'll know the God that saved me. My life will fade away. But they'll know the truth that sets me free. So I will live today for you alone to be my life. shared with Denver something we were going to do at the end of the service and he recommended that we do it now and I see why because after that song about a legacy and what strong a legacy is uh, tonight's kind of a special night for somebody 21 years ago the Lord brought a couple to our church and prior to that they had been stationed overseas in Europe and they had helped lead mission work over there. They had led evangelistic mission work. They had done all kinds of things like that. And then God brought them here to us. And they served here faithfully. The wife served on staff here for many years. And 
Now the Lord's about to move Brother Ken on. Tonight's his last night with us. And Pastor Wade, I'm going to ask you to come. We were going to pray over him and call him at the end of service, but we're going to do it now. Brother Ken, would you come up this way? Because you've left a legacy here. And you're going to continue. And I don't know what the Lord has in store for this next part of your life. But we as a church want to agree together and pray together. Pastor Wade, however you feel led to lead this, I want you to do that. (laughs) There's nobody else like Ken Switzer. We sure are going to miss this man. Are you all going to miss him? So thankful for the, the legacy that he has left here at this church over the years. So thankful for what he has done in this church, how he has served, how his wife has served. He's getting ready to move to the Mississippi Gulf Coast now, and um, he's going to um, move into his retirement years there. And, um, but we know he's not retiring from the work of the kingdom of God. So um, before we sing our next song, if everyone will just lift your hands here toward Ken, we're going to pray and we're going to thank the Lord for what he has done in Ken's life and what he has used Ken to do in this church, and then we're going to bless him as he goes off to this new um, place for himself. Lord, thank you for Ken Switzer. Thank you for his love for you. Thank you for his love for this church. Thank you for how he has served you so faithfully all through the years, how he has served you so faithfully in this church for the last 21 years. Lord, I thank you for the legacy that he has left. I thank you for the inspiration and the encouragement he has been to so many people in this church, Lord. I thank you even over these last couple of years as we have watched him um, without Miss Carol and how he's continued to remain faithful and steadfast to you. And I just thank you for that witness that he has left behind. I pray now as he goes into this next step in his journey with you that you will bless him. Lord, that you will bless all of his steps, his coming and his going. Lord, I pray that you will continue to use him for your kingdom, Lord. I pray that you will show him what the next step in his journey is, Lord. And I pray that these these days will be among the most fruitful of his life, Lord, and that you use him in ways that he can't imagine and we can't imagine, but you already have laid forth for him. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do there. Um, Go with him now, Lord. Lord, and help us as we um, learn to be without him, Lord. And I pray that we'll see him again here soon. Thank you for what you're going to do. And I ask you to do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Ken. I love you. I love you. Y'all are going to have a seat. Thank you. And thank you, Brother Ken. Um, you know, there's a wonderful ministry that my band and I have been a part of that is truly leaving a legacy of the gospel of Jesus uh, to the furthest corners of the planet. Um, They've been around now for over half a century. They're called um, Compassion International. Uh, Can I see a show of hands? How many of you have ever heard of Compassion International before? Uh, A lot of you. For those of you that don't know who they are, like like I mentioned, they're a nonprofit Christian organization based in Colorado Springs. And they've been around uh, for over 60 years. And over the last half a century, they've been going all over the world into places of incredible poverty and delivering children from poverty. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. They do that a lot of different ways, but one of the most profound ways they do that is they build Christian schools in, in communities of high, high poverty. And many children that have never... Many of them are wandering the streets in the middle of the day. Many of them are wondering where some of their upcoming meals might be coming from. Um, Five days a week, get the chance to go to school, just like your grandkids or your kids do. They get two square meals a day, and clean drinking water to drink, brand new clothes to wear. Um, They're taught reading, writing, and arithmetic. Many of the older children uh, are learning trades, trades that they can use to go get a job when school is over. I started being a part of the Ministry of Compassion when I was 19 years old, long before I ever even had a band. And the reason I did that is because five days a week, these children also have a Bible study class. They're learning what the Old Testament says about the character and the heart of God. They're learning what the New Testament says about the gospel of Jesus. And we've seen uh, it just, I mean, the impact has been amazing. If you've heard about compassion for a long time, you might wonder, I mean, is it really, I mean, is there really some kind of an impact that you can truly make? And the answer is an emphatic yes. Um, You know, because uh, I've tried to help as many of these kids go to school. It takes a little more than a dollar a day to give them the chance to go to school. It's $38 a month. And when you sponsor them for their schooling, you get to know them. Uh, You can write them letters. They'll write you letters back. 
Um, don't worry, they're translated. They'll be like handwritten, but then there'll be a translation to what they're telling you. Um, and my family's sponsored tons and tons of kids in the last 24 years. Um, but uh, it has been such a powerful, powerful, unique opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus in a very personal and very profound way. Uh, do we have that video, Paul? So uh, for any of you that are wondering, like, what kind of an impact could it really make? Uh, there's just a quick little video I want to show you. And it's of a, of a woman named Nora. And Nora is from Africa. And she was a part of a compassion project. And she's going to talk a little bit about the impact that Compassion School had on her life. But the coolest thing is that she's about to have one of the craziest and coolest surprises of her lifetime. And I can't wait for you to see it. Watch this with me for just a second. My name is Nora. I'm from Uganda. We are Jeff and Bonnie Mori. Nora was 10, I was 20 years old, and we sponsored her all the way completely through her program. They used to write to me letters, like almost every month. They always told me that they loved me, I was so special, and I was gonna make it. Three things never miss their letters. Uh, we, we did something so little. We felt like it was just so little. Jeff and I started realizing is we're looking at the small portion that we did and not looking at the magnification that God did. And that is through all of the Compassion team. At the Compassion Project, I always looked forward to going there because there was always good food. We could have chicken, eggs, milk, rice. So the monthly sponsorship empowers the Compassion team to provide the food, the medical care, the education care, but also the spiritual care with the programs that bring these kids in and teach them about Jesus. The praise and worship there was just the best time for me. We used to dance and you know, and of, all the time I could go back home and still do the same things with my mom and my other siblings. To think that you're just changing a child's life is too small of an understanding of what's going on. It's not just changing a child. It's changing the family. It's changing the community. It's changing the culture. The degree to which God multiplies everything that's given through all the people in compassion is phenomenal. When we were told we had the chance to meet Nora, I, I was almost speechless and it was just like, how could we not? Of course we want to meet her. I would like to say thank you, thank you so much to my sponsor, Jeff and Bonnie Mori. I hope I see you one day. I love you so much, wherever you are. How about today? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is this you? Yes. We're a little older you? than our photo, but yes. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you did for me. Oh. Thank you for loving me. As a sponsor, that $38 is expounded and it's incredibly multiplied. And it's stunning to see that what we see as so little Nora sees, the end result of it. To realize that you have even your small role to play because that small role doesn't stop with you. It continues on and it it lights a candle that lights another candle that lights another candle and it becomes exponential and that's in the hands of our God. Um, this is the kind of impact that you can make in the heart and the life of somebody else. Um, of all the kids that I've had the opportunity of sponsoring over the years, um, there's, there's a few that stand out, but there's one that really significantly stands out to me. His name is Somsack. He's a fully grown man now, but I had the chance to sponsor him for nine and a half years of his schooling. He lives in the country of Thailand. And when he was 11 years old, 
One of his letters had come in the mail, and it was a pretty standard, normal-sounding letter. He was talking about how school was, how his family was doing. But I'll never forget the second-to-last sentence that he wrote in that letter. It has stuck with me every single day since I read it. It was simple, but it was so profound. He said, Denver, I want you to know that I love Jesus Christ with all of my heart. And the reason that's so profound to me because here's this kid half a world away that lives in a country that is literally 98% Buddhist. And he's telling me how in love with Jesus he is. And to know that I have had a significant role in that child, in his life and in his development, not just for here. I've never gotten to meet him face to face like Nora got to meet them. But guess what? There is a day I will see him face to face, y'all. It won't be on this side of heaven, but there will be a day that I wrap my arms around my brother in Christ. And we get to reminisce upon the thousands and thousands of other little souls, others' lives who are eternally changed because people like you realized the level of impact that you could make in the kingdom of God as well. I can't put a price tag on something like that. And every single year, over 100,000 children personally accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. That is millions of people in the last 60 years. And 82 cents of every single dollar you give goes straight into the heart, the mind, the body, the soul of that specific child. And I got to share about their ministry as much as I can. And one of the ways I can do that is we have a lot of kids in need of being sponsored. Here's Salua. Uh, Her birthday is in 2009. Hooked on math, never worked for me, so I guess she's going to be 14. Uh, She's been waiting 336 days for a sponsor. She lives in Columbia. Uh, These little packets tell you where these children live, uh, what school they go to, a little bit about their lives. Um and uh, how to sponsor them. There's, there's a couple of ways that you can sponsor them. If you feel led to help them, you can help one or more than one tonight. Um, and if you're super high tech, what you can do is there's a little QR code right in the corner of one of these packets. You can scan it from the comfort of your pew, uh, fill it out right there on your phone. Um, and, uh, and you can do that. If you're not high tech like me, there's a little uh, packet, or there's a little form on the back. It asks for your name, your address, your email, your phone number. Uh, it's a perforated form. You can fill that out with a pen or a pencil and uh, turn it back into us. Um, here's the commitment I'm making to any of you tonight, and that is this. If any of you feel led to help uh, some children with compassion, if you fill it out with the QR code or you fill it out here on the back, uh, if you let us know that at the back, I want to give you some of my music, uh, all of my music that I brought with me from Nashville as a way to say thank you for making a tangible difference in the heart and the life of a child in need. Um, there's two ways that I can keep my commitment to you. Uh, if you still have CDs, I have three, and no, I have five of my CDs uh, currently in print, uh, my hymns album, the good book, a couple of my Christmas albums. Um, I'm going to give each one of these to you as a way to say for free, just to say thank you. Thank you for your partnership with Compassion for the Gospel. If you don't have a CD player anymore, because that's a real thing these days, then I have uh, USB jump drives, uh, flash drives, USB drives. You don't have to exercise to use a jump drive, all right? Um, This is 11 albums of Denver in the Mile High Orchestra. It's 136 songs. They're all standard MP3s. They work in most cars. They work in every computer. Um, This is all of my Christmas music, my hymns, my original music, my patriotic music. This is more music than you would ever want of me in your entire lifetime, all right? Um, And I'd love to give one of these to you as well if you'd like to help. Uh, We have a couple more songs we're going to do before we leave. But if any of you are curious at looking at a packet, reading it over, maybe you'd like to glance it over. By no means are you committing that you're going to sponsor, but maybe you'd like to look at one of these packets. Would you raise your hands real high in the sky, even there in the balcony? And my guys in the band are going to actually walk out and pass some of these packets out to you. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you about the guys in the Mile High Orchestra is they are wonderful musicians, which means they hear very well, but they do not always see very well. So if you can raise your hand real high in the sky, they won't pass you by, Um, especially Craig Freeman. He's a great runner, but he passes by people all the time. So we want to make sure everybody that wants a chance to see one of these packets can get one.
And if you have any questions at all after the concert, please feel free to come by and talk to me. I would love to answer any questions you may have. Anybody else? Good deal. Thank you for hearing my heart about this wonderful ministry and, uh, and continue to pray for these sweet little ones around the world. I really appreciate it. All righty. We've got a couple more songs for you that we're going to do. And this next one is a whole lot of fun. Uh, you know, uh, in, in, I, I really get a kick out of, of really, I'm just so grateful uh, for these guys because they are so multi-talented. Uh, Craig just told me he's starting to practice the trombone. Um, I, I'm jealous. I need to start practicing the trombone. But um, there's one guy in our band that really, truly, I think he plays like 17 different instruments. We didn't make him play the penny whistle on this tour, but he did on our Christmas tour. Um, he's already played the clarinet for you tonight. He's already played the saxophone. That would be Mr. Ross Walters. Give it up for Ross, everybody. And uh, so we're going to have him play another instrument. So I was like, what, what song could I break out from the archives of DMHO and make Ross play another instrument? And I love a style of music called the blues. And I thought it'd be a whole lot of fun to do one of our old blues songs. Uh, and it's about how uh, the Lord truly, uh, we can't get enough of the goodness and the hope and the love and the joy that only God gives. This is called Can't Get Enough. I can't get enough, not enough, not enough of you, all right. I can't get enough, not enough for you. You're too good to me, Lord, it's true. I can't get enough of you, that's right. Oh, Lord, I love you. I need you so. The more I get to mow you, Lord, the more I come to know I can't get enough. I can't get enough for you. You're too good to me, Lord, it's true. I can't get enough for you. Oh, that's right. It's not enough for me to feel you. It's not enough for me to pray. It's not enough to read all your stories, Lord, if I'm never moved to change. It's not enough to know about you, but you're enough for me to see that there ain't nothing I want more than all of you. So I give you all of me, because you don't get enough. You don't get enough. You don't get enough of me. You don't get enough, don't get enough of me. I can't be all you want me to be when I don't give enough of a me. There. Oh Lord, I love you, I need you so. The more I get to know you more, the Lord I come to know I can't get enough, can't get enough of me. get enough of me. Come on, fellas. It's not enough for me to feel you. It's not enough for me to pray. It's not enough to read your story if I never have a mood to change. It's not enough to know about you, but you're enough for me to see that that more than all of you, I give you all of me.
Chris Gray. Mr. Chris Gray, y'all. James on the jazz guitar. for this man aren't they fantastic y'all so much fun well before we leave you tonight I want to do a song for you that really truly is probably uh, the most important thing that I could say or sing um, for you this evening you know the last few years have been kind of a crazy time in our world um, and uh, especially for well for all of us it, it affected all of us uh, when the pandemic hit uh, in March of 2020, I call it, that's the day that the world ended. Um, you know, I, I was singing probably two to three concerts a week, two weekends, sometimes three weekends a month for 21 years up to that point. And, uh, and then in the, you know, the second week of March, all that ended. And uh, I, you know, it was really cool to be able to go home and eat uh, chips and Cheez-Its, and I watched, I watched Disney movies with my kids. We watched every single Marvel movie, I think, that ever came out during the pandemic, and uh, four and a half months went by. I was still singing some. I was writing a lot at home, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't singing concerts like I had been for 21 years, and then in uh, the end of July, I got the chance to go, I think it was to Georgia, um, and do three concerts uh, back to back to back, three nights in a row that were outdoors, 
And I was just so ecstatic. I was so excited that I was going to get the chance to sing again because uh, it had been a long time, been almost, uh, almost five months' time. And so I uh, got out there, got done with the first night, and I was a little tired. You know, I could tell I was a little winded, but, man, was I excited. By the end of the second night, I couldn't believe it. I had allergies. I had never had allergies before in my entire life. And there I am in the middle of the outdoors, in the middle of the summer, clearing my throat and whatever it was that was bugging me. Man, it was still there. It would just not go away. By the end of the third night, I got done singing, and then I had literally completely lost my voice. And then I knew something wasn't right. I mean, really not right. And so I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I drove as fast as I could back to Nashville, Tennessee, to go to Vanderbilt Hospital as soon as they'd open at 8.30 to the voice office. And I saw one of the world's most renowned voice doctors, and they did a bunch of tests. He sat me down at a desk right across from him, and he said, Denver, here's the thing. You've had major bleeding on your left vocal cord. And when you walk out of this room, you're not going to utter another syllable for 10 days. And then you're going to come back, and then we're going to find out just how bad the damage really is. And then he left. And I love to say that, that, that I could love to wish I could say to you that I was strong, and that, you know, God's got this and all those good things that we tell, tell ourselves. But to be really honest with y'all, I completely crashed. I was terrified. It's like, well, maybe there's something that more that God might have me do, but this is all that I've really ever done. And, uh, and I tried to keep an open mind about it, but I was absolutely afraid. And I started to really realize some things about my life. You know, there's an old hymn that we've sung, I've sung hundreds of times. It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus, his blood, and his righteousness. And I began to see that in my life, I had put my hope in my calling more than the person who had called me. That I'd put my hope in this voice that the creator gave me more than I put hope in the creator himself. And I started to realize, ladies and gentlemen, that everything, and I mean everything, is less. Everything is less compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord. He is truly our one and only true hope. It took me over half a year before I could actually sing again. I went to vocal therapy, a lot of things. I had three major setbacks. There was a, there was a time uh, where I truly thought I was never going to be able to sing uh, again. And it is by God's grace, it is by his healing hand that I could stand here today. What a gift that God's given me the chance to be able to sing and to still sing and to be able to sing about his love, about his grace, and about where real hope is. For some of you that feel hopeless, for some of you that feel there's no hope in sight, I know from my own experience that I've put my hope in so many different things. And I stand before you today as a reminder that there is one hope. And thank God it is a hope that never changes. Thank God it is a hope that is here for us in every day of every season. And thank God that he is the one hope for you and for me. So I had to write a song about that. And I hope it can be a reminder to you. Our one hope is Jesus. me close in my lonely nights who's the one who never lets me go and who speaks the truth in a world of lies who knows the longings of my soul there's only one true God who saves 
I trust the name above all names. My Redeemer and my friend, Lord, my life is in your hands. My one hope is you, Jesus, only you, Jesus washes away my sin and shame who restores my soul renews my strength is you jesus only you jesus every failure and fear is overcome by the power of christ the risen one you are the way you are the life you are the truth my one hope is you the wounds of my deepest pains you revive my broken heart back to life and no power or death or anything else could ever separate me from the unfailing and changing love of jesus christ you're the shelter in every storm Drift away, you lead me home. Lord, you are faithful in all your ways. I trust you alone for all my days. My one hope is you, Jesus, only you, Jesus, who washes away my sin and shame. Restore my soul, renews my strength is you, Jesus, only you, Jesus. Every failure and fear is overcome by the power of Christ, the risen one. You are the way, you are the light, you are the truth. My one hope is you. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Lord, I know you're my one hope, my one hope. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean in Jesus' name. You alone, you're my one hope, my one hope. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. I choose to say, you're my one hope, my one hope. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. For all my days, you're my one hope, my one hope. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in it be found. Found in the truth, you're my one righteousness so low far less to stand before the throne only you you're my one of my one hope my one hope is you jesus only you you jesus who washes away my sin and shame who restore my soul renews my strength is you Jesus, only you, Jesus. Every failure and fear is overcome by the power of Christ, the risen one. You are the way, you are the light, you are the truth. Lord, you're our way, you're our life, you are our truth. Jesus, our one hope is you.
sing with me as we close. Praise the name of Jesus, because he's my rock, and he's my fortress, and he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the pray with me. God, I thank you so much for tonight, and I thank you that we could have such a wonderful time. I thank you that we can celebrate some of our own right here at Northwest and the wonderful legacy that has been passed on to so many here because of the passion and the love and the legacy of Jesus in their lives. God, I pray for all of us that are tired, that might feel broken or hurting, those of us that have lost our way, those of us that literally feel hopeless. Lord, you are the hope for the hopeless. You are the strength for the weary. You're the author and perfecter of life, salvation, joy, prince of peace. God, we need you. We seek you. And so we realign ourselves right here tonight to say that Jesus Christ, you are our Lord, you are our Savior, our Redeemer, and our friend, and you alone are our one true hope. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for tonight. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Would you praise God with me tonight for his goodness? Thank you, Jesus. All right, a couple things I want to tell you really quick. I want to thank uh, Pastor Paul for giving us the chance to be here again. Uh, he was crazy enough to have us here once, and he was even crazier to bring us back. So thank you so much to him. Thank you to everybody here at Northcrest for letting us be a part of this wonderful evening. A couple of things I want to tell you. If you have any questions about compassion or, or if you just still have a CD player, um, we have music here. Uh, if you have a vinyl record player. I have vinyl records. I, if you have a cassette player, I actually have some cassettes from our very first album we made in 2001 because uh, they were still printing cassettes back then. If you have an eight track player, I cannot help you. All right. But anything else, I pretty much have some music for you. Come back and say hello. And, uh, and thanks so much for letting us be here. Are there any announcements that need to be made at all? Pastor, why don't you come on up and and, uh, and give us the announcements we need I for tonight? Right here, so. Oh, you <laughs> you got one of those fancy. Hey, will y'all give Denver and the Mile High Orchestra another hand tonight? So thankful for them and thankful for you being here. It has been a good day. I want to tell you two things before we go. Um, first of all, I want to thank you. You have done so well today. You've been so generous with our Gideon's offering. Um, if you did not give this morning, you can give tonight. Um, just write your check, write Gideon on the bottom, and drop it in the offering box as you leave. But you've done so well. We'll tell you next week how much we're able to give. But we received a wonderful offering. But I know you're going to give more, so I'm not going to announce how much it is yet. But thank you um, for how generous you were um, with our Gideon's. And secondly... Thank you for how many of you have signed up for our prayer walk that will be coming up on March 3rd and 4th. Um, but I know there are some of you who can, need to do that also. So if you will do that um, as you leave tonight, Laura will be out at the table. She will help you get signed up or you can sign up with the QR code. Either way, just remember we'll be doing that on March 3rd and 4th and we need you to sign up for one hour that you will walk this church and you will pray for our church and pray, pray for our community. We're going to be doing that for 24 hours. And so um, please, please, please get signed up for that before you leave tonight. Um, that's all I have. Y'all got anything else? Uh, well, for those of you that, if it's not past your bedtime, we'll have one last song Sounds while you guys good. leave. All right. But Thank uh, you if all. you can stick around, that's great. If you have to go, it's okay too. <laughs> Why don't you kick us into it there, Greg? I want to tell you who these guys are tonight. I've already introduced Mr. Jonathan. Give it up for Jonathan on the trombone tonight. That's right, Mr. Ross Walters from San Jose, California. Hey, Mr. Chris Gregg tonight on the alto saxophone. 
On the lead trumpet tonight, Mr. Tyler Yeager, all the way from Midland, Texas. Mr. Craig Freeman on the trumpet tonight. Give it up for our big bass player in the back, Mr. Neil Johnson. And give it up on the guitar tonight, Mr. James Saliga. He is an amazing player. And we would not be able to do what we do without the man on the drums all the way from the state of South Carolina. Give it up for Mr. Greg Napier, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we got one last song for you. It's an oldie but a goodie. Clap your hands with me just like this. Come on, come on. All right, I want to hear all you good folks here at Northcrest repeat after me, because we're going to do this little call and response about three or four times later in this song. Here we go. I said, Christ the solid. Rock I stand, rock I stand. All of their ground is sinking sand. Sights a solid, rock I stand, rock I stand. All of their ground, all of their ground is sinking sand. It's sinking sand. Come on, Christ the solid, rock I stand, rock I stand. All of their ground is sinking sand. Here we go. Build on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid, rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Southern rock I stand. Yeah, yeah. His soul, this covenant is blood. Support me in the whelming flood. And all around my soul gives way. He then is all my. Solid, rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all around the sand, all the other sand, all the sinking sand, so I cry. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, drummer boy, show me what you're made of tonight. Give it up for 
for Mr. Greg Dampier on the drums, y'all. Set one, a two, one, two, a one, two, three. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Far less to stand before the throne. Sinking sand, sinking sand. All the other ground, sinking sand. All the other ground, sinking sand. All the other ground, sinking sand. Someone cries. The solid rock, I Thank you, everybody. God bless y'all and good night. You're dismissed. Thank you very much.